this episode of Red. Joey and Trike do Boy. battle with a toppled tractor trailer. She does not look like she's gonna cooperate. Screw this. We're trying to get lucky. We got screwed. Trike breaks in a rookie the hard way. Wasn't supposed to do that. Marcy is out of town, and Bill is losing it. Hey, let go! Bill needs to find a way to calm down, do some feng shui or something. And Dennis fights the clock to save a slipping semi. We should have been done two hours ago. Chicago has more than 20,000 miles of highway full of breakdowns, spills, and wrecks. It's a dangerous mess, and somebody's got to clean it up. Bill runs O'Hare Tony, his wife Marcy, his brother Joey, a fleet of high-tech trucks, and a team of dedicated drivers who risk their lives every day, ready to respond at a moment's notice to the next wreck. <laughs> Monday morning in Chicago. The city's highways are crisscrossed with bridges and overpasses that threaten unsuspecting truckers with a rude awakening. When danger calls, O'Hare sends out two of its most experienced operators. Ten strike, head over towards Irving Park and Pulaski. It's a tractor trailer that's under the uh, CTA train. The tractor trailer was traveling west on Irving Park Road when suddenly everything went wrong. Metal rivets hanging off the bridge caught the top of the trailer, causing the entire rig to tip over onto the concrete pillars. Joey and Trike respond to the scene and check out the situation. If this thing was loaded, it would have blown right through the walls. Everything would have been on the side, and this thing, there's no doubt about it, would have rolled over. I, I took the right lane. There was a steel plate that was hanging off the bridge that hooked onto the top of the trailer that pushed the trailer on the side. Chicago's notorious for this. What happens is they repave the street and they don't come in and remark all the bridges. So these guys are 13-6, they think they'll fit, and the next thing you know, they end up hitting the bridges. He must have hit this thing doing at least 40 or 50. The police have blocked both westbound lanes, and the O'Hare crew has to work fast to get traffic moving again. Rigging up to that bottom corner right there. Got it? I'm gonna boom out. We got Mike doing a downward pull right now, holding that up the high side corner. I'm gonna get my, my boom rotated over to the downside, and we're gonna grab that corner. All that's holding this thing up is that big piece of aluminum and piece of steel. If it rolls over, we're gonna have to drag it up fully out of this, fully out of this viaduct before we do anything. But we're gonna stop that before it happens. Operating the remote, Joey will use his rotator's boom to pull the trailer in one spot very carefully and ease it back to the ground. Let's tighten her up. Let's see what she's going to play like. I'm just getting a piece of her. There it is. But Joey begins to have concerns that it might not be as easy as it looks. My biggest concern right now is when we start pulling on this thing, she kicks out from underneath me and she drops down. <laughs> that. I'm running my drag to this thing. Screw this. Time up! I'm getting my drag on it, dude. She does not look like she's gonna cooperate. The drag line will hold the trailer in the middle, hopefully preventing any slippage. With Joey's hey, boom holding it in the front, the and Trike's wrecker holding it in the back, the O'Hare crew has created a perfect triangulation that should upright the trailer. Pull it out of it! Now we gotta figure out how to get this guy out of here. So if now that the roof's so highly compensated that it's about eight more inches taller up there at the top, and you can see right here how it's bent up, it's really making life a little difficult now. Joey and Trike unlatch the cab and will use their wrecker to pull the trailer to safety. That's why we've been working together for years on years. 
good? You know, Jen, when you're the best there is, and you piss excellence, well, certain people start to realize. Hey, Mike! Back it up! I think you're all done, you know? There's always that face. We were trying to get lucky. We got screwed. And then Mike jammed the trailer into the bridge. What are you talking about? It's fine. There's not enough clearance to remove the trailer, so Joey attaches an extra chain to exert downward pressure so Trike can pull it free. Nice and easy, bro. That is why we are teamwork. The truck is pulling forward. Oh my God, we make it look easy, ladies and gentlemen. Let me check, I think we're clear. It's pretty much a good honor to work with Mike. We've been working together for years. And there's a point to where he knows exactly where I'm gonna ask him to go and he's gonna expect me to do something. You got this? Joey and I, we have such a tight knit team, that's why it looks so easy, is because we almost can anticipate what each other is gonna do. So I'm talking about, brother. Oh, yeah. I'll see ya. We're gonna air up the truck and we get the hell out of here. There could have been a lot more damage if somebody else would have came out here, you know. They did a real good job working together and stuff like that. So you guys did a real good job. Bro. I appreciate it, Joel. All right, my man, I'll see you up at the shop. Coming up, when Marcy's gone, Bill's temper hits the roof. We were at his yard dropping, so now we look like a bunch of idiots. Later, Trike gets old school out of fallen forklift. You hear me talk about old school. Marcy Graziana is Bill's devoted wife. She's also VP of O'Hare Towing. Marcy runs the show in the office and makes sure that dispatch gets it done. You're bringing 806 back here for a major, OK? This week, Marcy's oh headed God, out of town, idea. so Bill needs to handle both sides of the business on his own. All right, I'll just have to cry myself a river tonight. When I'm not here, Bill tends to be a little grumpy. My next tell will start going off her phone with guys here going, when are you coming back? Because Bill's being out of control. It, it's definitely the situation where absence, heart grows fonder kind of deal. Definitely that. When uh, Marcy's not here, I really start to notice as she's gone how much that she handles that I don't even know about. So I don't have to worry about them, and I don't even realize that they're on my to-do list when she's here. But uh, when she's not, then it all ends up on my plate, and then, then I notice. Marcy and Billy make a hole. When Marcy's out of town, Billy has nobody to, to talk to, and he gets upset. You still walking in circles? Nope. The floodgates are open, and everybody goes running the Billy and... Come on! Hey, let's go! Usually he gets a little cranky. Joe! Uh, it actually makes my job a lot easier when Marcy's in charge. You know exactly what she uh, she wants, what she doesn't want, you know? See, we were at his yard dropping, so now we look like a bunch of idiots. I have no idea what the hell Bill wants. Bill is way more intense, and Marcy is way, like, way less intense than Bill is. Like, when Bill kind of scares me and Marcy kind of relaxes you. Get to the call, but I don't want you driving like a crazy man. Well, I don't want to say it's easier when Marcy's here, but a little bit. Right now, I'm dealing with the tire that we should have done yesterday. I want 308 inside, like, right now, and I need a fast answer. Bill needs to find a way to calm down or do some feng shui or something. Meanwhile, from across town, a call comes in to O'Hare Dispatch. Trike and a rookie operator head out to the scene. A shipping company was trying to unload a forklift when they ran into a problem. They were bringing in the load, loading this trailer, and the forklift found a weak spot on the floor, and by doing so, it had fallen through the floor. Trike is training a rookie on a flatbed and is without his heavy-duty record, so he has to improvise. You hear me talk about old school, old school. Well, we didn't have the hydraulic booms back in the old days, so you rig, you relied a lot on your rigging. Trike's plan is to use a 4x6 wooden block and stand it up on its end, then rig chains up to the bottom of the forklift and run his winch line over the top of the block of wood. When he starts to tighten his winch line, the forklift should lift up and out of the door. Bring it on. That's what I need. Trike starts rigging up the forklift. 
This is where we're gonna achieve our lift. Winch in. It's time to see if Trike's rigging worked. One more. It wasn't supposed to do that. What it did is it kicked the chain back and he brought the chain up underneath. That's what you needed to do. They re-rig and try again. Go ahead. Is it coming up out of the hole? Next step is we're gonna go ahead and run the forklift across onto our truck, and then we'll go ahead and put it right back in the dock. This particular challenge, they said, do it with a flatbed. So, we just recovered a forklift with a flatbed. Back at O'Hare, Marcy's still away and Bill's temper is getting the best of him. Yeah, Bill is apparently in a very cranky mood today, and we're extremely busy, so we're trying to, you know, give everybody a break, but Bill called up everybody's lunch break right now. Hey, we're too busy to take a break today. Yeah, when Marcy's gone, quite frankly, my heart hurts. I do quite a few things to put a Band-Aid on that. I try to figure out ways to get myself diffused. It's actually bonsai. And it's, it's a style of growing anything. It is funny to watch some big ass dude trimming the little bonsai plants and like dipping them in water and taking care of them. And you kind of look at me like, what the, what? <laughs> My brother gives me a hard time when I play with these, but I don't really care. Maybe he was watching Karate Kid and he thought it was therapeutic. I don't get it. I don't know why he <laughs> has those things. I think I like them because they don't talk back. I think that's the whole, the whole process of it. I don't know. Can you call them a little bit of a hippie? Tree hugger? I don't know. This is a lemon tree that I had a, a lemon and an iced tea. And I spit the seed in here about, uh, about 12 years ago. It's my brother. I don't think they realize how important they are to me, and it's a big deal to me. Of all the big stuff I have in my life, I have a couple little trees. Coming up, Bill pushes the O'Hare crew to the brink. Everybody's very upset, including myself. I'm just trying to get the done. And later, Dennis is abandoned to rescue a twisted truck. They're not moving fast enough. I need to know where these guys are. What took you guys so long? With Marcy out of town, Bill's taking his anger out on the O'Hare crew. Come on! Right now, I'm dealing with the tire that we should have done yesterday. Bill called up everybody's lunch break right now. Bill called off everybody's lunch breaks, and we're all in a rush, so everybody's very upset, including myself. I'm just trying to get the done. I don't want to hear any bitching about missing lunch, so I got lunch upstairs. Let's eat while we can. This is the whole Mr. Mom thing. This is the best you're going to get from me. When's Marcy coming back? Yeah, when Marcy's gone, sometimes I just turn into a royal jackass, and I yell and scream and push everybody extra hard because I'm in a bad mood. Hey, now that, now that everybody's fat, dumb, and happy, and we're done with lunch, can we go out and maybe get a toe now? Not all the calls O'Hare gets are in the city or on major interstates. Sometimes they get called out to the middle of nowhere. Base to 302, Dennis. Need for you to start heading down to Hersher, Illinois. It's a tractor trailer in a ditch. Please be advised it has a very heavy load that needs to be offloaded. Dennis Miles arrives at the scene in truck 307, the only red truck in the fleet, and he already knows he's gonna need some help. What we got, we got a tractor trailer loaded with about 14,000 pounds of steel shelving. We need to offload the product before we recover the unit. While dispatch sends out Trike and Adam to offload the trailer, Dennis continues to size up the situation. The driver said when I first got here that when this happened, the belly wasn't broke like that. It was about a half hour after he was just sitting here that it just kind of slowly started to twist and break. So right now I've got a line to the tandems 
keeping the trailer stabilized until everybody gets here and gets the, the load out, and then we'll finish pulling it up onto the road. Time is crucial. The longer Dennis waits, the more the trailer sinks, so they need to unload that cargo now. When I got here, it was level. It was level with this, and as we've been sitting here in the last uh, half hour or so, the weight inside up against this wall is starting to compromise the ground. Trike and his team show up because this job is going to be a challenge. Let's see what we got. All right. Uh, right here, we got the about 750 pounds of pallet. We're gonna use the pallet puller. It's a special clamp to pull it to the edge, and then we'll use the bobcat. And at that point, once we get the trailer unloaded, Dennis is gonna pull the trailer back out onto the road. Now they must start the long and difficult process of unloading the trailer one pallet at a time. Hey, get the pallet puller in the chain. First, they attach a chain to the bottom of the pallet and use the bobcat to drag it towards the rear of the trailer. Then they use the fork on the end to lift the pallet up and out of the trailer and eventually onto a flatbed. 34 pallets got to come off one at a time. And then 34 is going to have to go onto the trailer one at a time. That's the only way to do it. After an hour and a half, the crew is finally prepared to move quickly. But Trike gets called out to another job. You want me to leave and or stay in here? All right. All right, Bob. You ready for this? Trike must leave with one of the flatbeds, so Dennis and his team are on their own. It's up to these guys to go ahead and do it. Dennis will keep these guys in line. As Trike heads back to the shop, Dennis and the crew continue to unload onto the flatbed. All 34 is not going to fit on the trailer, on this bed. We're doing it right now. We're doing a set, three rows of six for 18. This line here, and then he's starting the second line. This Actually, this one's finished. He'll be starting line number three, six more pallets. And we'll take this back to shop, unload it, come back and get the remainders. The flatbed is full, so they'll have to make two trips. While the guys are away, Dennis has to get the truck back on level ground. Well, while I'm waiting for the, the first load to get back, I'm going to try to see if we can pull it a little bit, maybe slide it over a little bit, make it a little bit easier to finish the job. And there she is. All set. Now the trailer is on level ground, but it's getting late, and Dennis can't afford to wait any longer. Even though he's never operated a bobcat before, he decides to give it a shot. I'm kind of making good use of some idle time while I'm waiting for the guys. I'm going to start partially unloading it, try to beat some of this darkness that's coming our way. It's a little slow, but we'll catch up as soon as everybody shows back up. Every minute, the sky darkens, and being in the middle of nowhere, there are no street lights. Unloading this trailer by myself so I can get it separated and towed in. I'm running out of daylight. I need to know where these guys are, what they're doing. I got to keep my composure as a manager. If you let yourself get so pissed off or get upset about trivial stuff like that, you tend to make mistakes. That's what I'm talking about. I'm going to walk away for a little bit. Coming up. Time is running out for Dennis to recover a ruined rig. He's a little mad, a little upset. We should have been done two hours ago. That's all I know. Back in the middle of nowhere, O'Hare driver Dennis had been rushing to get ahead of the setting sun as he attempted to unload thousands of pounds of cargo by himself. I need to know where these guys are. Now, his team has been gone for over three hours, and his frustration is starting to show. We should have been done two hours ago. That's all I know. And it's just, it took too long to get the equipment out here, and people are just, they're not moving fast enough. So I got it up out here to try to speed things up, and it's very frustrating. 
Just gotta take one step at a time, that's all. Finally, after four hours, Adam and Toby return with a flatbed to finish the job. What took you guys so long? A little mad, a little upset, but you know, everything's time consuming. It's not a short ride there, and it's not a short ride back. Now, we could have been done by six, but you see what time it is. And we've got another two, at least two hours to go before we're all done. Load them up, let's go. Hopefully we can get this done and get out of here. It's part of this business. Unfortunately, it's part of this business. Sometimes trying to make the wives and uh, the families understand that, that's, that's another story. Maybe, maybe when the wives watch this and they see this, maybe then they'll understand, okay, when my husband says, yeah, I'm gonna be an extra couple hours, hey, now I know why. Three feet all the way down. Nice little pull. Within the hour, we should be out of here. With all the cargo unloaded, Dennis tells the patient driver that the trailer is in good enough shape to be driven back and doesn't need to be towed. Chain down and just start heading back. Don't wait for me. All right. Yeah, we're just going to follow him back. It, it worked better than I thought. You do it. No more than 40 miles an hour. Once we get going down the road, okay? Go! Go straight! Go! The truck drivers aren't very smart. When a tow truck driver gets a call, there's no telling how long the job will take. We were trying to get lucky. We got screwed. There's only one sure thing that O'Hare operators will battle until the work is done. It's part of this business. Unfortunately, it's part of this business. If you need that job that you're off at 515, the towing recovery world's not it. We're there until it's done. We're there to solve a problem, and that's what we're going to do. Bill has his little bonsai green thumb, and every time he goes out of town, he's like, hey, make sure you water my plants. And he was actually at another shop. He came down here on a riot, just like a, an animal. Like, who knocked over one of my bonsais, and why is it all cracked in half? <laughs> I don't know. Not a good day for the bonsai crop, Joe. No, doesn't look like it. I'm not heartless. I just ate. I, I don't got a green thumb. <laughs>